Okay guys, so here I am, welcome to Auto Repair, with a new product, well, new to me. This is a brand new sub that's not that one, this one here. This is the SCAR Audio. As you can probably tell, this is going to be a review and um, unboxing of a SCAR Audio VXF 12 inch subwoofer. 1500 watts of RMS, and it also is 3000 watts peak. And this here, just for a quick representation of Scar Audio's products, this is their cheapest sub that they have. It's about $30 online, I think $37 probably. But this is a 300 watt max sub, but holy shit, look at the venting of this thing. I mean, there's a coil. Absolutely amazing. D2, so dual 2 ohms, wired up to 4 ohms, or wired down to 1 ohm. Uh, this excursion is absolutely phenomenal. I will probably be showing that in this video. So, this is just a budget sub. And it's still built, like, fully mackerel. So, I have already cut the tape just to make this a little bit quicker. And I have here some information on the box corresponding to the primer. So, has a three inch copper voice coil. Now, on their website, it stated that it was a copper, a, um, the way that I understood it, it was supposed to be a true copper voice coil. But according to this, it's a CCA coil. So, not real sure what that is all about. So apparently it is a CCA. I apologize for the poor graphics. This is just some cheap little camera. I have the D2 version. You can also get the D4 version. Triple stack ferrite motor. Um, I would never recommend trying to drive a subwoofer at that high of a frequency, but they're just letting you know that's what it can do. But Scar Audio is absolutely phenomenal. Sorry about that. I mean, these people are amazing. So, a quick rundown around the box, just to let you guys see what you'll be getting. Now, the only unboxing I've already done right now is just removing it out of the big shipping box. So the shipping box has got a little damaged, but that's all my fault. So, I do like the boxes. So, there's your SCAR logo. And then your other side. Right magnet, all that stuff. And it gives you all your uh, cutouts and all that stuff in your stuff. Now, as you can clearly see here, you're going to have, may have a little bit of trouble mounting this in the box that it's just perfectly the size for the cutout damper because as you can tell there's a very small gap between your terminals and your basket, the edge of the basket, even with this one. So um, I, I do know that people do mount these original just standardized mount, but I normally mount subs inverted. That way I can monitor everything and all that. So this is a 1500 watt RMS sub and let me put you back on the tripod real fast. So just bear with me guys. This camera cannot pause apparently, which is really dumb. But it doesn't pause, so it just keeps recording. Except I just stuff here. Looks like we're gonna have help today. Standard poodle. Royal standard poodle. Say hi Henry. Say hi to everybody. So sorry about the lighting. I'm trying to utilize the sun here. Because, you know. <laughs> Again, this is my first unboxing video, so it's kinda of different. So, um, obviously as you saw, it's always double box stuff. So the first thing you're gonna notice is your usage manual and you get a really cool scar audio sticker. I also got both of these, obviously, with the 8-inch version. Now, that 8-inch version is the IX series. It is not the VVX series. So, as you can tell, you can get in 12-inch or 15-inch version, D2 or D4 in either um, country, in either size, VFX. 
So also it gives you all of your cutout diameters and everything that's required, your TS parameters, even electrical resistance, um, and your DC resistance. That's actually pretty useful. Because this camera won't focus. Oh, this camera doesn't have autofocus. Great. So voice coil diameter um, in the D2 version 76.5 millimeters, 55 millimeters high. And the magnetic gap height is 20. That's pretty interesting. Maximum linear excursion, 17.5 millimeters. You can't really see any of that can. Um, see right here it says voice coil wire, copper. But for some reason it says CCAW. So does that mean copper cloud aluminum? So someone please tell me what that actually stands for. That CCAW right there. And I've worked with Car Audio for many years, but... Um, I thought that was supposed to be copper clad aluminum, but maybe I'm wrong. So, cool thing here. Oh, and they also give you some enclosure designs. Now, here they say the wall thickness is supposed to be like um, just a little over half an inch thick. Um, yeah, definitely not. <laughs> my, my baffle, my enclosure is this thick. And I recommend something like that. Number one, the weight of it to keep it from just tearing itself clean out of the wood keep flexing down and if you install it like this then the weight will try and pull or if you install it like this and the wood's too low it could it could work through but never had anything happen like that before but this is to be honest my first very large subwoofer I've ever owned and my second brand new stuff so I do like that they give you a molded Styrofoam. That is really nice. And this is not that cheap stuff. This is really nice styrofoam. So, and there you can see it all nicely tucked away. So, the next step is pulling this big bad boy out. And this thing is heavy. It weighs about 46 pounds, I believe. We're going to have to check that with the scale. So, here we have the ZFX, or the ZXF, sorry. So, so before we move on along, I kind of want to see how heavy this thing is really actually is. seems to be glued on real nicely so that's good news as well. Now I'm getting ready to order a Tarams 5k amp to power this big bad boy with and the dust cap is pretty darn sturdy I'll give you that. I mean pushing in one spot it doesn't dent. Now obviously I'm not pushing real hard. I am putting pretty good pressure on it. So it does incorporate a double stitch around your surround. Very high roll for, uh, foam surround on there. I do like how deep the cone is too. Now this subwoofer goes for $269. I mean for $269 this is absolutely amazing. And let's look at the electrical aspects of this thing. So I'm scratching up the floor and keep scratching up the bottom of the motor. I am going to be setting it back in the floor. This is a triple stack magnet. And yes, what you're seeing right there is the voice coil. I mean, you can literally reach your hand in there and just touch the thing. So, this thing is absolutely amazing. Now, also, having that on there moves around a lot easier. So, now let's look at things such as your spiders and all that stuff. Actually, I guess I was wrong. We're gonna start it like this. 
Now the sub is large enough that you can do that, even without the styrofoam. So here we have your voice coil. I mean, this thing is absolutely amazing. Now this is a D2 voice coil. It is just absolutely amazing. <laughs> you have your flat tinsel leads. Now they're not sewn into your spider, but they are adhered to your spider. Now this actually does use two spiders. This is a double spider um, sub. And you might already be able to see it, but the spider is glued in place, but it's also bolted in place from here and you can see the bolt come out on the other side and as you can tell it is two spiders because you can tell a quite definite thickness difference in between the two so if I can move this thing around so here is your other voice coil connection I mean three inch voice coil look at that thing that is absolutely beautiful on what I want the lighting. There we go. And obviously it's got all your motor vents and your coil vents. Now I will not be removing the magnet boot because that's just a pain in the neck and it's all nice and neat. Now this accepts, I believe it accepts AKH wire. <laughs> Look at that. That is insane. This sub is amazing. And your top plate and everything, you can't really see down in there, sadly. I wish I could see down inside the former vents, but this is going to be a high vast sub. Let me see what the um, number of layers, moving mass, do do suspension, where is that? Uh, position area. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't really read this very well. <laughs> Where is all that stuff? Suspension in the camera. Oh, <laughs> okay, sorry guys, it's right there. Yes, this is actually, you want to use this with a ported enclosure. Although, it is compatible with a sealed box, but I don't recommend that. Now I know you guys can't read that very well, I'm sorry about that. But I can tell that it is because this coil is overhung from the top from the pole inside there, but again, you can't see that in there at all. Now, this sub is not a budget sub in my opinion. <laughs> the price is absolutely amazing, but as you can tell, there are some very big differences. Here you can see that the tinsel leads are brought way up, while well, these are not. Well, they kind of are, but they're sewn, they're adhered on. Now this sub, it's sewn in as well. But this is just a stamped steel basket, as you can tell. It's really thin. I mean, it's really thin. While this, most definitely is not. I mean, this thing means business. So, in just a few minutes, I'll hook this up to an amplifier to give you a small free air demo. Now, I can't do a really large free air demo because I haven't broken this subwoofer in yet. Wow. That's some really soft tinsel lead. Look how easy that moves. So, you definitely get what you paid for. I can't even think of what to say. Um, <laughs> but this is absolutely phenomenal. The only thing that I really wish that they would not have done is leave the main pole vent here. That's kind of weird, kind of angle it. That one here, there's no screen in there, and it's pretty large. And this. I love that you can just look at that coil unimpeded. I mean, that is awesome. But if large pieces of debris or dust or hair or whatever, I mean, come on. It can just go right in there, even into your coil former cooling or into your gap. I mean, that could pose a really big threat, such as if you have a poorly designed box and your screws start to totally just strip out, you're going to have massive problems with sawdust possibly, and that you do not want getting in your sub, but this, it can easily get in there, even chips possibly. However, if you invert it, it's not going to be inside the box, 
but yes you can install it standardized and here's also what I mean see how close how close that's gonna be from the side of the I mean there's not very much room and I have had a few people come to me and kind of not really complain but they specifically state that is one of their least favorite aspects of this driver is that you can't hardly install it in a box unless you have a specific way of getting this down in there because once you get your wiring in there it's almost impossible also it makes it very difficult to drop down in there so aside from that I, I'm absolutely impressed and even that that isn't a really big thing for me I mean even the venting that's not that's definitely not a deal breaker for two hundred and sixty nine dollars this is what you get I mean good grief this is awesome so since this is a D2 sub I'm gonna wire it up to 4 ohms that way my amplifier can run it because it's a um, Kenwood stereo system but it is comp it is able to drive this so I'll be back at you with that. Okay guys, so this is going to be a small demonstration of the Scar Audio VXF, I don't ever remember that number, uh, 12 inch D2 version. So right now I have it wired up to 4 ohms because I don't want it burning up in the oven trying to use. Um, now this I can't really push it real hard because I haven't broken the subwoofer in at all. This is going to be maybe more. So we're going to be giving it 30 hertz. That's the FS, so we'll see what she does with 30 hertz. We'll do 50 hertz this time. Especially since this is a free air demo that will be limited to everything. So right now, it's getting 11.7 volts. About going into a 4 ohm load. For some reason, the pot is a bit dirty. As you can tell, we're pushing. And I don't have to worry about this amp. Okay, I shouldn't have put the camera back in. And, uh, this is only about, well, 100 watts hard mass. So now I'm going to uncover the bottom of it so that it won't be restricted, you know, the air flow. And even just like this right now, I can hear it distorting my voice. And there the response just got a lot smoother. So let's put that line up right there. Boy, this thing moves some air, man. Set it on a five box just to give it a little bit help to pretty much stay in place, but I have enough air around it because it doesn't like that pole, <laughs> the motor vents, and everything being blocked. So now everything is free. So. Okay, nothing hot. I don't like this camera now. There we go. See, for some 
person keeps doing that. Now again, this is not even a good representation of what this thing can do. Because I don't want to mess it up at all. And I don't want to screw up this amp because it's mom's. chair rattling. I mean, this thing is intense. Absolutely amazing. So that was a small air demo of it. Free air demo. Now, if I had my big amp in here, then I'd really give it a little bit more power because I could turn it up. But this thing starts clipping, so it's not a clean signal. And with it not a clean signal, since that coil can't move as freely as it is intended to, what happens is, is it, since it's not moving as much, it acts as more of just a short circuit. Because if you pull a coil out of the driver, out of the magnet, and try powering it just like regular, it will catch fire. Pretty much no matter what wattage it is, because it relies on the interaction between the magnetic fields to push it forward and backward. And with no other interaction, its inductance goes to like just about zero, so it has no inductance, and it just rise, even with an AC frequency going into it, unless the frequency is really, really high. Now, since this is a dual voice coil, I can wire it up to two, 4 ohms or wire it down to 1, but this thing is truly amazing. Very impressed with this sub. Very, very happy with it. So, here's a better butt shot of it. See what I mean? There's no screen in there at all. There we go. So, but still extremely impressed. So, like, share, subscribe, please comment. Thanks a lot.